Hello there. Today I'm going to talk to you about robotic assisted hair transplant technology, which has been in the market since 2011, and why this technology may not be the panacea for hair transplant surgery we were hoping for. Many potential hair transplant candidates have the misperception that because robotic assisted hair transplant is the latest, that it is better, even when there is no evidence that supports this belief. In other words, people often incorrectly assume that because something is new, that it is better. And companies capitalize upon this uh, misconception when introducing and marketing new technology. And they use this appeal to novelty to influence consumer decision making. This is also true for companies that market new medical devices, including those used in hair restoration, despite the fact that they have not been proven to be superior in efficacy or safety. Although the use of robotics is often promoted as the most advanced hair restoration option, there are several downsides that are rarely discussed. So at this point, you might be asking, so what are the downsides? Well, the technology is not perfect, and in my opinion, robotic-assisted hair restoration often does not result in dense or natural-looking hairlines. There is always the possibility of introducing human error when operating the machine. Additionally, with robotic-assisted surgery, there are the added and unique risk of mechanical failure or software glitches. Any component of the system can malfunction at any time, including the optical system and robotic arm. This device was cleared with the indication for use on men with male pattern baldness who have straight black or brown hair. That is because the computer optics work best when there is a high contrast between the hair and the scalp, such as dark hair against the white scalp. Use of this device on any other type of patient, including women, would be considered an off-label use. Although the machine is marketed as having low transection rates of the follicular units, these numbers reported are for the ideal candidates. Again, which are those individuals who have dark, straight hair. Even with ideal candidates, the reported minimum robotic transaction rates are twice that of a manual technique employed by a skilled hair restoration physician. So if you're less than an ideal candidate for robotic hair transplant, your results too will be less than ideal or worse. So if you don't have dark, straight hair, robotic assisted transplant is not the treatment option for you and you would fare much better undergoing the traditional manual FUE or FUT procedures. The robot can only do what it is programmed to do, so if something unexpected comes up, the machine cannot adjust its response accordingly. In contrast, the manual methods allow the physician to, to be able to use um, tactile and visual feedback to make fine-tuned adjustments to compensate for factors that affect FUE extraction success, such as scalp texture and thickness, hair curl and follicular size. The robotic dual punch system also creates larger holes and therefore creates larger scars. The physician is able to use small tools with the manual method, which means smaller scars and less distortion of the surrounding tissue anatomy should a future repeat procedure be required as the hair loss progresses. The increased cost of a robotic procedure is another downside. Robotic-assisted FUE is much more expensive compared to manual FUE due to the added high cost of the machine itself, as well as the costs involved in the ongoing maintenance, software updates, and the royalty fee that the manufacturer is paid each time the device is used. Practices that are solely dedicated to hair restoration have not embraced these devices uniformly because they do not see the major benefit that they were marketed for. More often, these machines are not operated and owned by physicians who have extensive experience and training in hair restoration. This technology, unfortunately, allows less experienced hair transplant doctors to use this uh, device just to augment other services as, uh, in, uh, as a supplement to generating revenue. A robotic device used in hair transplant is simply a tool and the true qualification in hair restoration is not the device or its associated marketing, but the actual physician using the device. It is the physician and his team that truly determines the outcome of the procedures and not the overly promoted instrument. So if there's someone who is not competent or knowledgeable with the required skill set to create natural looking hair transplant, the final result will not be satisfying for the patient, even if using the latest technology. This is because similar to the artist paintbrush, robots and other devices used in hair restoration are only tools and the result of the final product is, is only as good as the person is using it. So, if there needs to, so there needs to be a competent physician backed by a skilled team of technicians in order to have the best results if one were to consider a robotic transplant. A robot cannot make fine-tuned adjustments on its own, nor can it replace human factors such as talent and eye for aesthetics. Nevertheless, using the newest or latest technology in no way guarantees the best outcomes. So when choosing a hair restoration physician, don't be distracted by advertisements of the latest gizmo. It is most important to prioritize the physician's knowledge, skill, and ability to deliver natural-looking final results. 
Well, that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching this video, and please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave suggestions below for future topics. Until next time.